Good afternoon and welcome to 1370 WLTH. It's your weekend girl, Diana Lynn Biggs here with none other than Lloyd McClendon from the Seattle Mariners and Coach Earl Smith from Coach's Corner. We welcome you. You could have been anywhere in the world today, but you're here with us and we thank you for that. Let's give Lloyd a round of applause, everybody. As you know, Lloyd McClendon was born and raised in Gary, Indiana, and he grew up here, and all of us know him as a, a child, a friend, a classmate. We have Giselle Jones here from Roosevelt High School to make a presentation to Lloyd on behalf of the Roosevelt Class of 77 and alumni. Here's Giselle. Come on up, Giselle. On behalf of the Roosevelt Panthers staff, students, and alumni, myself also being an alumni, we'd like to present you with this token of our appreciation for all that you've done being a Panther. So in this bag, you'll have a shirt that says, we are the life, the legend, the legacy, and that's us, Roosevelt Panthers. You also have a water bottle and a Roosevelt scarf. And again, thank you for all that you do and being an inspiration. Well, I'll wear it with pride. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right. All right. We just want to congratulate you as being appointed coach, and Coach Earl Smith will talk to you a little bit more about that, but we want to talk to you about Black History Month in general, what does that mean to you? Well, first of all, where's my man Tommy Williams? Uh, Tommy? <laughs> Tommy's in the block. He's in the Tommy, hall. <laughs> Tommy's missing the block again, just like we did in high school. In high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, actually, I tell you what, it's, it's obviously, it means a lot to me uh, and what it represents and what, what I've been able to represent. And I hope that I represent uh, the city of Gary very, in, in a proud way. I've tried to, you know, you try to live your life in a manner in which uh, the people that are surrounding you can be proud of what you do. So, uh, you know, our legacy continues, our struggle continues, and uh, I'm just a, a small part of it. So, Coach has some questions for you. Yeah, I, I have. First of all, I want to congratulate you. I, uh, I'm still trying to understand, you know, I was trying to recruit Lord when he was coming up through the ranks, and I thought he was headed to Emerson, but he bypassed. Emerson and he ended up at uh, the Velt. So I have no problems with that because I'm sitting here now with a Velt hat on, you know. But anyway, but anyway, Lord, uh, when you look back on your career, could you possibly talk about some of the people that might have had an early influence on your life as to help you to be where you are today? Well, you know, Coach, I, I was very fortunate. You know, I had coaches like yourself, uh, Coach Telefero, Coach Dorsey, uh, all the great coaches that uh, were at uh, Roosevelt, Dodell. Bo Mallard, uh, that really instilled a uh, foundation, you know, based on character and, you know, uh, what, what you believe in. So I, I was very fortunate to have uh, people in my life that really structured it in a manner where if I ever faced, faced adversity, I would be okay. And, and to reach that magnitude of being a, a major coach in baseball, uh, what would you attribute that to? I mean, I saw something about it said that players kind of <laughs> gravitated to you because of your personality. I mean, how would you describe a Lord McClendon? I was probably a lot like <laughs> Coach Del Farrell. Okay. You know, I can still hear him today, you know, get up those steps and run those stairs, you know, or Coach Dodell. I'll give you a quick story about Coach Dodell where he was spring training when I was playing for the Pirates, and at the end of the day we were running sprints. And they had came down to see a game or two, and I was really tired, and I was lagging behind, and all of a sudden I heard this voice. Get your butt up there, and get to the front of the line, and I'm like, oh my God, that's the coast out hell, you know. So, <laughs> man, you know, so, uh, you know, that type of, uh, you know, discipline uh, really helped me as far as reaching my goals today. Just wanted to ask you, how do you balance? You know, you you were at, with the Cubs for a while, and then you went with Detroit. How do you balance? You know, moving around and staying grounded. You know, we all miss you here, and. You know, when uh, the public and the community heard that you were coming, you know, a lot of people were reaching out. John Hedwood called, and a couple of other guys was like, wow, he's actually coming back home. How do you kind of balance moving around and still being able to, you know, just stop for a minute and just do something informal like this? Well, uh, I mean, you should always, you know, have a foundation, and you should always be able to come back home. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and if you don't have a home, then, you know, uh, you, you're not not moving in the right direction. So uh, this has always been home for me and always will be. Okay. And you know, it's very close to my heart. But you know, unfortunately, my travels take me to other places. But uh, Gary will always be home for me. You know, I uh, I had a chance to go to Indianapolis this past weekend. I was kind of sharing it with you, what he honored the 1964 Gary Roosevelt track and field team. So he had a chance to interview a lot of the participants and fans. 
And when you mentioned something about uh, character and the things that really meant a lot to you, I mean, how would you really describe, I mean, the teachers, the, the community? I mean, these are seem to be some of the things that's missing today. If you had a chance to sort of recapture some of the things that Roosevelt and other schools stood for, where do you think we might start? Well, it, it was simple. It was character. It was leadership. It was dedication. Uh, and it was accountability, uh, you know, to your teammates, your classmates, uh, and, and to your family. So, um, you know, that, that was a pretty solid foundation for us. And we really need to, you know, step it up as far as our efforts are concerned, as, as far as Little League Baseball is concerned. I, I think it really builds character. Uh, obviously, I was very fortunate enough to play for uh, Jesse Lawson at Anderson Little League, and we went on to the Little League World Series and did great things. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, and this is really important, and, and I hope there are a lot of coaches out there and parents that are listening because, in the Little League World Series, I actually cried coming off the field when I was 12 years old. Mm. Uh, but the most Im impactful thing that ever happened in my life was Coach, Coach Lawson was there, my dad was there, and they said, it's okay. You did the best that you can do. And I think a lot of times, we put so much pressure on our young kids to win at any cost mm -hmm. that it really turns them off from the game of baseball. Because baseball is a very difficult game to play as, as it is. So we shouldn't put any more pressure on them. Okay, now you, I know you went to Pittsburgh Pirates at one time, and, and I think a question was asked. I was just kind of doing a little background check. They kind of asked him to make a comparison between Detroit and Pittsburgh. And I think one of the things that really stood out to me, you said something about the potential. You would rather go with Detroit because of the potential that it offered. So you saw the same things with the Mariners, more or less? Yeah, I really did. I, you know, I, I think this is a great opportunity. I mean, obviously, we got one, two of the best pitchers in all of baseball with Felix Hernandez and uh, Iwakuma. But we got some young kids that remind me so much of the young kids that we had in Detroit. Uh, uh, Taiwan Walker and, and a kid by the name of Paxton that, that have big arms. So uh, the potential is really, really solid for us. And uh, I think our future is very bright. Uh, he mentioned something about his, his leadership, maybe in, in the locker room. And I saw something, too, where you indicated that 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 was your job to sort of control what took place in the locker room. You were more concerned with what took place on the field. So can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I really am, Coach. I mean, you know, a lot of times it gets it, it gets blown out of proportion about, you know, the locker room and whether or not guys get along. You know, when you win, you get along uh, in, in your locker room. I, I need guys to lead on the field. and I need guys to be all-star players like Robinson Cano. You know, uh, go out and get a three-run homer. Uh, strike somebody out in the ninth inning. And, you know, when, when you talk about the, the locker room, the attitude in the locker room, and, and our preparation, I think that's my job as a manager to make sure our guys on a daily basis are getting ready to play the game. I noticed that uh, with the Cubs, there were a lot of men that came from Dominican Republican. Uh, what about your team? How many Dominican Republican? What is the percentage? Do and we do get a lot of players from Latin American countries. Uh, in fact, most teams have academies in, in these Latin American uh, countries where the facilities develop young men to play baseball. And I think one of the reasons they, they do it is because it's so economical, and that's one of the things that we're fighting for here, is to put these academies in Gary, Indiana, right. and let our right. kids develop. So mm -hmm. it, it's a tough fight. Do, do you remember when you were at Frabel? Uh, did you play basketball at Frabel? Yeah, I played basketball. You played basketball? Yeah. Did you enjoy that sport as well as baseball, or you just achieved it one better? No, I, I did. I really enjoyed basketball. I, I, did. I thought I was pretty good. You yes. Know. You were uh, head of the basketball team back at Frame well, I, mean, I remember I, that. I was trying to yeah. recruit him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, you know, I had Coach Hamilton at Frame and he, yeah. another, you know, another uh, strong character in my life, you know, that really uh, solidified who I am. So, uh, and gave me a lot of structure as far as, you know, how to run offense and, things like that, but I, I really enjoyed my days playing basketball. If you had to identify role models for our youth, who would you identify as a top role model for the African American youth? I've, I've had so many people that have shaped and molded me, but really when you talk about your foundation, I would have to say my dad. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, we get lost in, in the fact that, you know, we want to we wanna create role models for our kids, you know, and it should start at home. And you know, uh, and it, it, it's more to being a 
a father than just making the baby. You know, uh, you, you got to spend time with him, and, and you got to you got to put quality time in on. So I was very fortunate. You know, I came from a two-parent house, and uh, I, I can remember my mom now saying, "When your dad get home, you're gonna get your butt whooped." You know, so you know, and that's what it was all about. You know, it, it kept you in line. So uh, my dad was certainly. My just something about <coughs> parental influence. As I said, this weekend I was down in Indianapolis, and it was, it was great to see some of these former athletes there, but they had their kids with them. Mm -hmm. And the way they responded to the dad, the young ladies, uh, their father, I mean, it, they were just proud of the fact that their father was being recognized. Mm -hmm. so, and, and most of them had fairly decent jobs, but the impact that uh, the dad had on his kids was tremendous. You could just tell that by the way they responded. Right. So as he mentioned before, that's a real powerful impact on the family is parental influence. Now, I just like I just got through dealing with, believe it or not, Lord, uh, we didn't have we didn't have a holiday basketball tournament this year, the first time mm. in, since 1950, which is a very long time. Really? Wow. And so, but we had trouble trying to get parents to come out even during the holiday tournament. Uh, if I had had a rock show. A rapture or something to go along with, we might have a packed house. Yeah. But some kind of way, we got to get parents more involved with their young kids. Young kids, that's, that's key. That's important. Um, is, you know, the village. It takes a village to raise a child. And what you mentioned about your dad, he would spank someone else as well. He, along with the parents, it takes the entire community. And I know that you spend a lot of time in Detroit, and a lot of their situations are similar to Gary's. So in your time there, can you tell us about anything that you saw or maybe that you did to bring the community together? I would love to hear about that. Um, excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit. But we took baseball into the, the inner city, okay. and we really wanted to get involved. And, um, and I thought it was great, but we'd go out into the cities and hold clinics and educate kids on the do's and don'ts of, of baseball and, and life in general. And uh, it was a very successful program. So you became a part of the community yeah. as opposed to just an extension of it. Sure. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Coach, you got some closing uh, words? No, I don't have any. I'm just saying that uh, this has been a great weekend for me because, as I said, I had a chance to be in Indianapolis with some Roseville people and to sit here with Lloyd, uh, somebody that I tried to recruit. I didn't get down. <laughs> but I've, I've been a great admirer of him and, uh, of him, and I'm, I'm just wishing him the best. Because I know if it comes to hard work and whatever it takes to reach that plateau, he's going to get there. And I know God's willing. He's, he's, he's a family man and, mm -hmm. and and a godly man. And I think with all those right. characteristics, you can't do anything but be Amen. successful. So I wish you the best. I appreciate. It. You know, I, I I appreciate you having me. And uh, you know, again, I I try to live my life in a manner in which I can make you know those around me proud of what I've accomplished. And I, I hope that uh, you know. My people in the city of Gary are proud of how I go about my business and you know how I represent the city of Gary. You know, I, I'm always conscious of the fact that there's so many athletes that are in the paper for doing the wrong things, right? but they never talk about the good things that, that people do. So uh, I appreciate you guys having me here, and, uh, and you know, I ask uh, for your prayers and you know, for God to keep strengthening me and mm -hmm. keep moving in the right. Okay. And again, this is Dinah Lamb from WLTH, The Weekend Show, with the extended version of Coach's Corner with Coach Earl Smith. And like I said, you could have been anywhere in the world today, but you choose to be here with us as we kick off Black History Month, WLTH style. Thanks a lot for coming.